The German Armed Forces first met the Soviet T-34 and KV-1s in combat in the opening days of Operation Barbarossa in 1941. It immediately became apparent that the Panzers were outclassed by the Russian tanks. Despite upgrading the armour on the Panzer 3s and 4s, the German tanks still struggled and calls came from the front line asking for a new medium tank that could cope with the Soviet menace. An exact reproduction of the T-34 was rejected due to German pride in their own manufacturing processes, the anathema of using a perceived racially inferior design in the Third Reich, and the inability to manufacture the aluminium fuel tank. In December 1941, Daimler-Benz and MAN were contracted to design a new 30-ton tank armed with a 7.5cm main gun. Various industrial firms had already been working on new medium tanks, so this allowed for some speed in the development phase of the new vehicle. Both firms' vehicles led to lots of design concepts from the T-34, including sloped frontal armour. In March 1942, Hitler awarded the development contract to Daimler-Benz, but this was then given over to MAN in May after a technical review. The Daimler-Benz model required a brand new turret design, however, the MAN tank utilised an existing turret and the need to get the tanks into production and on the front line in as short a time as possible swung the contract in the favour of MAN. A prototype which was already being referred to as the Panther was produced and trials began throughout the autumn of 1942. The tank entered production in November of 1942 as a Panzerkampf Wagen 5 Panther SDKFZ-171. The first 20 production vehicles were designated Ausf A, which was changed, confusingly, to Ausf D1 in early 1943. Subsequent vehicles had their armour increased to 80mm on the glacis and 120mm on the mantlet. This increased the weight of the vehicle from 35 tonnes to 45 tonnes and also required a more powerful engine to cope. This production run was designated as the Ausf D2. The speed with which the vehicle was rushed into production from the initial design had the inevitable results of mechanical unreliability. Most of the trouble was found in the transmission and steerage linkages, which were designed for a much lighter vehicle with less powerful engine. The engine also tended to overheat and petrol fires were not uncommon. This had the knock-on effect that the system boost could not be ironed out in time for the massive German operation, codenamed Zitadel, in July of 1943. The Battle of Kursk demonstrated the failings of the Panther D, with only a handful ever being available on the battlefield at any one time. Breakdowns, transmission failures and engine fires ensured that the Panther was essentially toothless. Adding the losses from enemy action meant that the theoretical paper strength of 200 Panthers during Kursk's was actually reduced down to 40. This number was reduced even further as more tanks were lost on the battlefield and becoming beyond the range of recovery when the Soviets captured large areas of German-held ground. After the ill-fated Kursk operation with its lacklustre performance by the Alps D2, a new production type of the Panther entered service. Continuing with a confusing designation, this was known as the Alps A. This included modifications to the commander's cupola on the turret and other smaller changes. The key improvements were the development of the variable speed turret traverse drive, which theoretically enabled faster target acquisition. The final production version of the Panther was the G model, which made its debut in the spring of 1944. Construction was simplified and interior space increased by changing the angle of the exterior armour plating. The Alps G was the last model to enter and it remained in production until the factories were over in 1945. 5,508 Panthers were built between 1942 and 45, 3,740 being the Alps G version. A final version of the Panther was envisioned and this would have been designated Panther II and was to have an 8.8cm gun mounted on a larger vehicle but this concept was never realised before the war's end. With the main issues of the Aus D ironed out in the Aus A and later G, the Panther became a far better main battle tank from 1944 onwards. However, Germany was on the back foot at this point in the war, and the armoured formations were more likely to have been used to drive a spearhead into the flanks of large-scale Soviet operations in the east. The power of the 7.5cm gun came as a shock to Soviet tankers and caused massive casualties in the attack. Hitler's orders of no retreat meant that the Panzer formations were used as fire brigades, being moved from points of crisis where they were needed. One particular Panzer regiment used in this manner consisted of 34 Tigers and 46 Panthers, along with an infantry battalion, self-propelled artillery battalion and an engineering battalion. In January, this formation fought for five days and destroyed no less than 267 Soviet tanks, against the loss of one Tiger and four Panthers. Meanwhile, in the West, the Panthers were also demonstrating their prowess when fighting defensively. The Americans and British calculated that four or five Cromwells and Shermans were needed to kill one Panther. 
However, the heavy fighting and the built-up Bocage terrain immediately after the Normandy landings meant that the long-range killing power of the Panther was drastically reduced. This was also confounded by Allied superiority in air power and artillery, blunting the Panther's effects even further. The newer versions of the Panther still suffered from mechanical failures, and as the Allies advanced into Germany, their paths were strewn with Panthers that had broken down. As a main battle tank, the Panther was the equal and better of the majority of the Allied armour that was fielded against it. However, it was hamstrung by a rush development and production, causing catastrophic mechanical failures which even later models failed to overcome completely. The lack of fuel in the Third Reich affected its operation, and Hitler's orders to hold fast blunted the hitting power of a vehicle that should have been at the forefront of the attack spear point. The intricacies of the design meant that it was a complex vehicle to produce, and the numbers of Panthers rolling out of the factories were swamped by the Allied production of simpler and cheaper tanks. One on one, the Panther was the king of the battlefield, but there were far too many negative factors that reduced its effectiveness as a whole. 